Hey everybody, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be a refreshed version of USMLE Step 1 High Yield Images Part 3. It's going to be better audio, a couple different pictures as well. I know when I originally made this video, the audio quality for this particular video was pretty poor, and I apologize for that, but hopefully this one will be a little bit better and it'll be easier to follow along with. As always, the images here are high yield for both USMLE Step 1 and Comlex Level 1. Quick update before we get started today. I am super, super excited to announce that I have just released my website, medschoolmoose.com. If you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that I've been wanting to do this for a while, never really had the time, kind of debated whether or not I should, but I took some time off, finally got the chance to do it, and it is here. Here's a little screenshot preview of it. I'm, I'm going to be writing articles for medical students, for residents on a ton of different and helpful topics. Of course, going to have all of my high-yield USMLE and Comlex prep, some free resources that I have included here as well, my Amazon shop with all the amazing products that I use. Basically, this website is going to be my new ecosystem for a ton of different content. Of course, I'm going to continue to make all of my YouTube videos, but there will also be some free resources, some articles that I've written. I have a newsletter hopefully coming down the pipeline. So things for medical students, for residents, for studying, for success in residency, all these different things will be at medschoolmoose.com. I will leave a link in the bio, but be sure to go check that out to get all of my latest content. All that being said, I hope you enjoy the website. Let's go ahead and get started with these high yield images. Starting off with a rash here, we see a rash on the forehead of a child. And what we're looking at up here, this is going to be a superficial hemangioma. This is a benign tumor of blood vessels, usually occurs in children as we see here, totally benign. And it presents as a red papule or plaque as we see here this reddish raised area frequently on the face and this one is of course on the face it is generally asymptomatic sometimes these can go away with time and sometimes they persist so if you see a red papule or plaque like this especially in a child one of the differentials you want to be thinking about is a superficial hemangioma. This next image, we see a diffuse rash on the palms of a patient here. What we're looking at is an example of Janeway lesions. This one is super high yield to know. Remember, this is a painless erythematous lesion that can occur on the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. And the big association that you need to know with these Janeway lesions is it is a sign of infective endocarditis. I have covered this in so many different videos, all of the high yield signs and symptoms that you need to know. If you see this one on the exam, Janeway lesions, they're painless, immediately start thinking about infective endocarditis. This next image here, we're looking at crystals and we need to be able to classify them. And in this case, these are struvite crystals. The composition of these, not as high yield, but it's ammonium magnesium phosphate, aka struvite crystals, that's the composition. And the classic description is a coffin lid shaped appearance, which you can definitely appreciate in that image right there. So if you see these kind of boxy rectangular crystals, you wanna be thinking struvite crystals. Moving on to some histology here, what we're looking at, we see all of these kind of weird appearing nuclei in these cells here. We are looking at orphan Annie nuclei. Basically what this is, it's an empty appearing nuclei with central clearing. You can see it in some of these uh, cells down here. There's some central clearing, looks kind of empty. And the association here, it is seen in papillary thyroid carcinoma. All right, so if you see these images, orphan anti nuclei, it's seen in papillary thyroid carcinoma. And just to really drive home the picture with the visual stimulus, this is that orphan anti eyes, these really scary, weird looking eyes, pretty empty appearing, just like the nuclei in these cells that are seen in papillary thyroid carcinoma. Very important to know that. Moving on with yet another rash here, what we're looking at is Gotrin's papules. These are erythematous scaly plaques. Hopefully you can appreciate that here. Seen on the extensor surfaces generally of the knuckles as well as the elbow. You can see it's on the extensor surface, the dorsal aspect here. The association that you need to know with Gotrin's papules, it is seen in dermatomyositis. Really important to know that. And now we're back to some histology. We're looking at another slide here. We see some of these empty appearing areas, some of these kind of whitish cells. Hopefully this orients you. These are goblet cells. So we know that we're in the intestine. And what we're looking at here is Whipple disease. This is the histology of Whipple disease. Two important features that I want you to know, these empty kind of white areas here, these are lipid vacuoles that are seen in Whipple disease. And then also in this area over here, we see some, maybe a little bit hard to appreciate on this picture, but there's some enlarged foamy macrophages that are containing that trophorima whippleii that is seen in the small intestine lamina propria that is characteristic of Whipple disease. So if you see a histology slide like this, don't be too worried. Just take a minute, orient yourself. You know that there's some goblet cells. You know you're probably in the intestine. You see some lipid vacuoles. 
Maybe you can appreciate some foamy macrophages in this area, and boom, you'll have the diagnosis Whipple disease. Really important to know that image. Now we're back with a rash. I guess we're kind of jumping back and forth between rashes and histology in this one, but the rash that we're looking at here is an example of erythema multiforme. Hopefully you can appreciate that there are multiple erythematous macules and papules kind of evolving into target lesions like you may see with Lyme disease, but not quite the same appearance. But if you see that and it's diffuse like that, you want to be thinking erythema multiforme. Another high yield association with erythema multiforme, it is associated with infection by HSV, herpes simplex, as well as mycoplasma. So if you see this image, this kind of diffuse target lesion-like rash, you want to be thinking erythema multiforme associated with an infection from HSV or mycoplasma. Continuing with rashes here, I guess this is just high yield dermatology at this point, but what we're seeing uh, on the cheek here, this is an example of a discoid rash. This is an erythematous and scaly patch of skin, which you should definitely be able to appreciate here, very scaly. Frequently appears on the face and the scalp, and what is it seen in? It is seen in lupus, systemic lupus erythematosus. If you see this on the face of an elderly patient or on the scalp, you want to be thinking discoid rash, and you want to be thinking lupus. Back to some histology here, of course, what else? We see a lovely circle sign here all over this slide, and what we're looking at are Carl Exner bodies. What these are, these are granulosa cells that are arranged in a rosette, kind of flower pattern. Hopefully you can appreciate that. This is a pretty good one, kind of really good here, especially this lower layer. And it's a rosette pattern of granulosa cells around collections of eosinophilic fluid. This is particularly seen in granulosa cell tumors. So if you see a histology slide like this, you can kind of pick up on this pattern that some of these cells are arranged in a circular or a rosette pattern. You want to be thinking Carl Exner bodies and you want to be thinking granulosa cell tumor. All right, finally, a break from the histology and the dermatology. We have an x-ray of the lower chest and the abdomen, a KUB here. What we're looking at here is an example of a small bowel obstruction. The thing that I want to call your attention to is that there's multiple air fluid levels in the bowel here and kind of a stepladder appearance. You see how it's kind of just like stacked on top of each other. If we see that in a patient, we immediately want to be thinking about a small bowel obstruction. Moving on to the eye, some ophthalmology, we have a fundoscopic exam and we notice uh, a significant abnormality here in like this left upper quadrant of the image. What we're looking at here is an example of retinal detachment. This presents as a crinkling of the retinal tissue, can kind of cause some changes, some irritation of the vasculature. Notice how it becomes a little bit wavy here. But if we see something like this abnormality on a retinal exam, on a fundoscopic exam, we want to be thinking about retinal detachment. All right, breaks over. We're going to get back to some more dermatology. We see some abnormalities here, uh, one here, maybe one cut off right up there. What we're looking at are examples of ash leaf spots. These are hypopigmented macules that are seen in tuberous sclerosis. So if you see these discolored areas, they're kind of lighter than everything else, hypopigmented macules. You want to be thinking ash leaf spots, which are associated with tuberous sclerosis. Moving on here, we have an x-ray and we have a very bright region kind of in the center here, maybe some type of barium or something like that. This is an example of a Zenker's diverticulum. And this is a barium swallow, just as I said. This is an outpouching of the esophagus, typically caused by constriction or tightening of the cricopharyngeus muscle. And because it's tightening, uh, when there's an increase in pressure, it leads to an outpouching like this. Food, fluid can get caught there, and you get the formation of a Zenker's diverticulum, which can be seen on x-ray with a barium swallow. This next image, we're seeing some very sharp kind of pointy crystals. Hopefully you know this one. This is a monosodium urate crystal. This is high yield for a couple different reasons. It is, of course, seen in gout, and the description that you need to know negatively biofringent needle-shaped crystals. Let me say that one more time. Negatively biofringent needle-shaped crystals that are seen in gout. These are monosodium urate crystals. This is actually what was on the cover slide. Hopefully you were able to identify that there at the beginning of this presentation as well. This next image, we're seeing an obvious discoloration on the lower lip of a patient here. You should know this one. This is putz jaeger syndrome. This is characterized by the development of non-cancerous hamartomas. It can be seen throughout the entire GI tract. One of the classic presentations is this hyperpigmented lip, but it can also be hyperpigmentation of the hands and of the genitalia as well. So if you see something like this, make that association with putz jaeger syndrome. Moving on, we have another rash here kind of around the eyes, uh, pretty circumferential and red. This is a heliotrope rash. It's a reddish purplish discoloration. This one is more red than purple, seen around both of the eyes. The association to know here, it is also seen in dermatomyositis, just like the Gottschalk's papules. You need to know both of those in association with this disease. 
Gostrin's papules, dermatomyositis, heliotrope rash, dermatomyositis. Next up here, we have a CT scan and we have a lovely arrow sign. What we're looking at here is pretty scary. It's an example of his saddle pulmonary embolus. This is an embolism, a blood clot, right in the large vasculature of the lungs right there. This can be very life-threatening, very serious. It's definitely something that should not be there, so hopefully you can pick up on that. It is a saddle pulmonary embolus. More radiology here. We have another x-ray. Remember, this is all bright on this side, so we're thinking about some type of contrast, and then it kind of thins out a lot here. And what we're looking at there is what's called a string sign. This is also known as the string sign of Cantor, seen on a barium swallow. And what we're looking at here is a severe narrowing of the bowel that leads to a string-like appearance, which hopefully you can see that right there. This can be seen in multiple different diseases. Some of the high-yield ones to know are Crohn disease, colon cancer, and gastrointestinal tuberculosis. So this string sign is not specific for anything in particular, but hopefully you can identify it on radiology and have a differential for it, including Crohn disease, colon cancer, and gastrointestinal TB. Another rash on the hand here, this one is an example of Osler nodes. I, I said it before and I will say it again, the signs and symptoms of infective endocarditis are so critical to know for US Emily Step 1 and Comlex Level 1. We already talked about Janeway lesions, those were painless. Osler nodes are painful. Remember Osler, ow, it's painful. And these are raised red lesions seen on the pads of the fingers and the toes. If you see something like this on the exam and the vignette mentions that it is painful, you need to immediately make the association with Osler nodes and immediately make the association with infective endocarditis. This is critical. All right, now it is your turn to test your knowledge. I have a chest x-ray here. There's a lovely arrow sign up here. I want you to tell me the name of this, what that arrow is pointing to, and what disease this is a sign of. I'm going to leave the correct answer pinned in the comments below. Leave your guess in the comments below. Check it against my correct answer that will be pinned. Hopefully you know this one. Hopefully you get it right. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you got value out of this video, please drop me a like. Leave me a comment, especially to guess that test your knowledge slide right before. Share this with other people that you are know are studying for step one and level one. And be sure to subscribe and also check out medschoolmoose.com because there will of course be a ton of awesome content there. Thank you so much for watching and good luck studying.